this problem is problem 36 from chapter 12, section 7 on inverse Laplace transform. And here we have a 48, 48 volt independent voltage source. And before time zero, it's connected in series with a 250 ohm resistor, a 50 millihenry inductor, and a um, 5 microfarad capacitor. And what we're looking for is we're looking for the um, time voltage um, equation for the voltage drop across the capacitor. So before the switch happens, this is what circuit we have. So we have um, 48 volts connected in series. The circuit's in its uh, steady state, which means the inductor is really a short, right? So it's a short, and the capacitor is an open. So it's capacitor is an open, charged up to 48 volts. So we have 48 volts here, and that's a short. And then right when time zero, or when the switch closes, it disconnects the circuit from the um, independent voltage source and the capacitor will start to release its energy and then gradually go to zero really fast. So when the switch happens, we become disconnected from the source and then current starts to flow. So to solve this problem, what you're going to do is you're going to write the general equation using KVL for, um, for this circuit and then um, once you do that, you will do an inverse Laplace transform, or well, you will do a Laplace transform um, your equation and into the S domain. Once you do that, you will do partial fraction expansion to um, you'll do partial fraction expansion to find uh, to match up your equation and force your equation to match up with um, some values or some tables um, that. Oh man, why am I having such a hard time saying this? So you do partial fraction expansion, use your inverse Laplace transform table in order to bring it back into the time domain. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so let's get started. So now we're looking for this and the switch has happened. Now we are disconnected. We are disconnected from that 48 voltage source and the energy stored in this capacitor starts to come out. So, a two, we have some current that's going through there. So if we write our K, um, KVL equation, so um, obviously we're not going to use KCL. It doesn't make sense. KCL makes sense for a, um, a parallel connected circuit, but for a series connected circuit, we're going to have to use um, KVL. So KVL says the sum of the voltage drops in a closed mesh will equal zero. So let's start writing that equation. So it's going to be I times R plus I times L, right? But current through a, um, well, let's just write out. So plus I times L plus G naught, that's equal to zero. Well, current through a, um, a, an inductor, current through an inductor is L D I D T, and that's from chapter 7. So, this can be rewritten as um, as L, sorry, L D I D T. So now, where do we go from here? We have to think about what I is. So what is this current? Where does it come from? It couldn't possibly have come from the resistor because the resistor doesn't store any energy. It's a, a passive circuit element. So it couldn't have come from the inductor because one of the properties of an inductor is that it has um, it can't change current instantaneously. So before time zero, current through the inductor was zero. So after time zero, it's still going to be zero right after. It can change voltage, but not um, current. So that can't be the driving force behind our um, our current equation or how we think about this current. It has to come from the capacitor because the capacitor, the property of the capacitor is that it can't change voltage instantaneously. So it had 48 volts before the switching happened. 
So after the switching happened, it'll have 48 volts, but what it can change is current. So the current equation has to be driven by the capacitor. So we know then that I is equal to C D B D T. Current through the capacitor is I, C times um, D B D T. So now we can make some substitutions. We can substitute I for here, and then we can differentiate again and substitute back to here. So take the derivative of that will give me di dt is really c d squared v d t squared. So now we're going to make some substitutions. This is going to become, um, that was ir, so this is going to become r c d v d t. And this is going to become LC dv squared dt squared. So this is uh, plus LC dv squared v dt squared plus v not, not plus v not is equal to zero. Now here, if we put in the numbers at this point, it's cumbersome and it loses um, some important information about the relationship. Now you're going to see um, tau or L RC and LC together. Um, so it's, I think it's best to not plug in those values just until the very end. So now I'm going to put them in order of powers. So this is going to be rewritten as, I'm going to put that term first, d squared v dt squared lc plus dv rc rc dv dt plus v naught is equal to zero. Okay, and we're looking for that. So now the next thing that we're going to do is get this to be a one coefficient. So I'm going to divide the whole equation through by LC. Every term is going to be divided by LC. Well, that gives me the one coefficient that I would like. So d squared v dt squared. Over here, this is going to give me, the c's cancel, so it's going to give me r over l times d d d t. And then this here is 1 over LC times V out. Okay. Now, we're going to use the Laplace transform table that someone has already created. We need to use table 212, or 122. So table 122 says this is really, um, the second derivative can be rewritten in the S domain as S squared times the the V of S, which is the voltage drop across the capacitor of Vs, right, minus, this comes straight from table 12.2, minus S times the value of the function before times zero. So the value of the function before times zero is the VDC. So VDC, that's the 48 volts. And then minus the derivative of that. Well, since VDC is a constant, then the derivative of that is going to be zero. The derivative of the constant is zero. If it had been a sinusoid, then sine, the derivative of sine is cosine, and cosine is negative sine. But since we're in DC before times zero, that derivative becomes zero. So then this here becomes R over L. And straight from table 212, it says df dt is s times f of f, s minus f of zero. In our case, RF is the V function, the voltage function. So then this is going to be R over L times um, S V of S minus F of zero, which is the V DC. So the voltage before times zero is the DC voltage. And then this here is just still plus 1 over L C times V out is equal to 0. Okay, 
Now we're going to group together our Vs coefficients. So we got V of S, and here are the coefficients for that. It's going to be S squared times S squared. And then over here, we have RLS. So that's going to be plus RL times S. And then that's it. That's all. I think that is it. And of course, I left this in the time building. V out is going to be, of course, V of S in S domain. So that means I have one more coefficient. So that V of S is plus 1 over LC. Now we're going to group together the VDC's coefficient. So the coefficients that we have for VDC is going to be the S and then this coefficient RL. So it's going to be S plus R over L. And let me make sure I haven't made any mistakes. And that's equal to zero. Now, I'm going to put the, I'm going to solve for V of S. So now we will solve for V of S. That means we're going to put this on the other side of the equation, that VDC, and divide by this coefficient here. So that will give me V of S is equal to, we're going to put that on the other side, VDC S plus R over L. And then that's going to be divided by this coefficient, which is S squared plus R over L times S plus 1 over LC. So now we did the Laplace transform of that uh, differential equation. And now we have this. Now the next thing we're going to do is plug in the numbers. So when you plug in the numbers, so you put in 48 for the VDC, 250 for the R, 50 uh, millihenries for the L, and then 5 microfarads for the C, you should come up with this equation. Okay. You should come up with 48S plus 240,000 over S squared plus 5,000 S plus 4 million. Okay. Now, now we need to put do partial fraction expansion. That's just a given when you do inverse Laplace transforms. So we're going to uh, factor this. It factors into it factors into S plus 1,000 times S plus 4,000. Okay. And partial fractions expansion says that I can rewrite this as some number over S plus 1,000 plus some number over S plus 4,000. Okay. Now we need to find out what that A and that B is. So we are going to um, solve for this. We're going to um, A is going to be this less what we're looking for, so less that. So it's going to be 48 S plus 240. That's over. That's going to be over um, 1,000, or um, S plus 400, 4,000. And evaluate that at S is equal to negative 1,000. And when you do that, so you put negative 1,000 in that equation, you should come up with A is 64. And B, B is going to be 48S plus 240,000 over S plus 1,000. So you value that at S is equal to 4, 000, negative 4,000. And that should give you negative 16. Okay, 
Now, I did it kind of in my head because I absolutely hate doing it longhand. But for those of you, and, and besides, if you know, then I didn't want you to have to watch the whole video and watch me do that. But for those of you who don't know how, I, uh, how it is, is that when you have something that is, um, has parts like that, like to, that factors out, the, um, the A is always going to be um, set that is equal to zero, and then um, take the original and then eliminate the one that you were looking for. And then um, that is how you solve it. But let me do it the longhand way because it's kind of hard to describe partial fraction expansion. So partial fraction expansion works like this. I'm looking for some value. I'm looking for A. What the heck is A? So to do that, I'm going to do a trick. First, I'm going to get rid of the denominator of A. So I do that by multiplying by S plus 1,000. So then multiply this by S by 1,000, then this will cancel out, right? So what I'm left with is 48 S plus 240,000 over S plus 4, 4,000. And then over here, I've got A by itself, and I've got B times S plus 1,000 over S plus 4,000. Okay. So now I'm going to strategically get rid of B by setting solving this for S is equal to negative 1,000. Because when S is equal to negative 1,000, this negative 1,000 plus 1,000 is 0, so B just magically goes away. And that's why we take S is equal to negative 1,000 here. Because it's a nifty little trick that gets rid of B and tells me what A is. So do the same technique for B, and you should come up with B. A is 64, and B is equal to negative 16. So we can rewrite that as. So all of that could be rewritten as um, B of S is equal to 64 over S plus um, 1,000 minus 16 over S plus 4,000. And that, so now you use table 12.2, I think. I didn't write down yet. So you use table 12.1. From table 12.1, the inverse Laplace transform for this is going to be, so V, this in the time domain is going to be 64 e to the negative 1,000, 1,000 t, minus 16 times e to the 4,000, negative 4,000 t. And that is for t positive. And this is the answer for that problem. Okay. Good luck on your homework, and be sure to share the video if it helped you. And um, like the Facebook. Thanks.